there are a lot of things I can't do, like I can't go out at night, like to parties. I can't like speak out in class. I can't really stand up for myself because a lot of people see that as a girl being disrespectful or just a wild, crazy child. I think that being a girl um, can stop me from doing some things. For example, when you think about a, a plane, <laughs> you think about a guy as the pilot and a girl as the one who is catering the food and stuff like that. And I think about when I become older, I want to do like whatever I want to do. And it doesn't contain whether I'm a girl or a boy. When any girl do a mistake, they always blame her. Uh, because of her reputation, not like a boy. There are a lot of things uh, that a woman can't do, and maybe some women would love to do that. I'd like to be treated the same as boys, and I'd like to wear what I want to without anything being expected of me. And I'd like to go where I want, do what I want, wear what I want as well, without anyone saying, no, you can't do that, you're a girl. It's breakfast time at home in London on a dark winter morning. I'm getting ready to take our two-year-old Esther to nursery and her big sister Alice to school. Right, should we go off to nursery? Now, being a dad at the school gates isn't so unusual anymore, but I'm still definitely in the minority. And I should add, I don't do this anywhere near as often as my wife does. Gender still has a huge influence on how we all live our lives, and having two daughters has brought that into sharp focus for me. Like any parent, whether you've got boys or girls, you always worry about the opportunities that they're going to get and the freedoms that they may or may not be able to enjoy. And the more I think about it, the more I want to explore why it is that actually most countries in the world have laws that prevent boys and girls and men and women being treated differently. But actually their experience is that that still happens. No country in the world has been assessed and declared to be gender neutral, gender equal. So I want to try and understand what it is about the social and cultural exchanges that these two have as they're growing up that maybe mean they don't have the same chance as a boy would. They just think like, oh, she's a feminist, you know, she just, oh, it's just like so annoying. That's often the comment I get, just, oh, like, shut up, <laughs> just, <laughs> they don't bother to listen even. When someone just shuts you down, like, just like, don't say that. It's just like, you kind of just like lose the willing to want to talk, talk about it, you know. If you look at the most recent gender equality index from the World Economic Forum, this place, Iceland, is right at the top. That means it's better than anywhere else when it comes to making men and women and girls and boys equal. Paternity and maternity rights are the same, and recently boardroom quotas for women were introduced. So on the face of it, if you're a 15-year-old girl, Iceland's as good as it gets. You're on your own? Yeah, I'm always home alone when I come home. Thanks for calling. A woman is like expected to be like always well-dressed and and sexy and hot even <laughs> but a guy isn't really expected to be that but when you're a girl people like they care way too much they're just like why is she wearing that why is she saying that just everything is questioned okay ready to go and that's how the story goes. it's friday night Figness's parents are already out and she's spending the evening at a local youth club where she often goes Vignes is allowed to go out until 11 p.m., sometimes even midnight, and then she walks home alone down empty, dimly lit streets. I wonder if she and her friends realize how unusual that is. We are aware of that it's, it is unique that we can just go out and not another And my mom was actually just talking about it the other day that she wouldn't want to live anywhere else because then she would always be so worried about me <laughs> not coming home, you know, when, when I'm out with my friends until like 11 or 12. 
But this must give you an amazing amount of freedom about what you can do because yes. you're not reliant on your parents to come and get you the whole time. Yeah, yeah. 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 I was in New York the other day and I couldn't go out to Central Park be because it was more than, I think, eight. And I thought it was really weird after 8 p.m. that I couldn't go out and walk across Central Park. And then I was We know wow, that uh, if different. we travel, we have to be more careful. We know that. Our parents are always uh, afraid for us uh, from uh, the people, uh, from the society, from everything outside. Uh, and uh, I think they like the idea of staying at home is better for us. It's frustrating when you are at home and you really get bored because you can't do anything at home, not like boys. I've come to Jordan and you don't have to spend very much time here to see that girls and boys and women and men are performing quite different roles. And I suppose my definition of gender equality has always been that girls and boys and men and women should be able to do whatever they want. And I'm very interested in an alternative perspective, which is that actually men and women are equal, but they're also different. And I'm really interested to have that perspective explained to me. Jordan is ranked close to the bottom of the Gender Equality Index. Just over 10% of its parliamentarians are women, and there's no legislation prohibiting gender discrimination. But 15-year-old Mira has equal access to education, and her father Marwan has high expectations of what she can achieve. The women and girls are preparing the food, and in a tradition that appears to cross cultures, Marwan takes charge of the barbecue. And do lots of men like cooking, or you're a bit unusual? Uh, well, I like I like uh, during vacation. I like to cook to give uh, my wife more relaxation, my kids, and I enjoy to make barbecue actually. Now, all children grow up with rules, but being a Muslim girl in an Arab country, Mira has more than most. But what would she do with more freedom? I would smoke. <laughs> I would try to smoke, because always boys, when they get nervous or um, get mad of uh, something, they smoke. So I would cigarettes? Try. Yes. You want to smoke cigarettes? I would try. <laughs> would you like to try smoking? No. <laughs> in England, it's quite normal for 15 or 16 year old girls to maybe have a boyfriend. Do you think that that's too much freedom for a girl when she's 15 or 16? I think it's too much freedom for a girl who is, uh, her age is uh, 15 because uh, she's not a grown up to think what. Uh, she wants in her life and what she should do. Do you guys talk about boys? Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> if you said to your father, I think I want to have a relationship when I'm 18 or 19, what would your father say? No, I think he will disagree this idea. He would, will not like this idea. I think he will kill me. <laughs> a lot of boys, they will be like, oh, are you a virgin? And if a girl says yes, they'll be like, but you're 16 or you're 15, like, is it not time? There's a lot of pressure on girls, definitely, in this country. It's not a nice culture at all. Sixteen-year-old Lulu lives in southeast London. The UK ranks number 18 on that same gender equality index. On average, women get paid a third less than men for the same work, and they make up 23% of Parliament. Certainly, Lulu and her friends have much more freedom than Mira to socialise with boys, but they're fed up with how some boys are talking to them. 
nerve you're not like no well you're a hoe then Sorry, yeah I'm and then as soon as you say no oh you're a skank you anyway little hoe okay 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 you can either be a skank skirt or slut one of three if we're not if we're not putting in the number it's just that it's we're so used to it now yeah it's just, just repeated every day it's yeah like so it's like a thing now. where it's not even a big thing anymore or like they're just bragging or something. oh yeah i did things but i beat her i banged her i banged her banged, banged this her, one banged that one i banged that one over there the place where oh. i was yeah. see that park over there i banged oh, in that park four yeah. times four <laughs> times behind the ramp over there There are things I feel that girls can't do, that boys are allowed to do because they're boys. Like ill behavior, for example, or just clowning around in class. I feel like it's more for the guys than it is for the girls. And I prefer to keep quiet because it feels like it's more of the guys that are supposed to be loud and rowdy and all that. Lesotho ranks 16th on the Gender Equality Index, making it two places higher than the UK. Women here don't have inheritance or custody rights and abortion remains illegal, but it's judged to be the most equal country in sub-Saharan Africa. They don't allow us to go out. Shui Shui and her friend Rompo appear unimpressed by that. Boys do have their way. And you know, if, if like a boy I use with his parents, it's not that, <gasps> but if you're a girl and then you do that, it'll be like, this girl is so, so not well behaved. We can't exactly stand up to our parents. I still have that fear of being disrespectful if I try to stand up for it. So I just keep quiet and just let it go. Because you can't say anything. You're not allowed to voice out your opinion. As a girl, you know, you'll have that uh, shameful thing. Is you have to like, be okay, a lady. Yes, I'm a lady. <laughs> yeah. It's fine, mommy. If you, don't, if you don't want to hear me out, it's fine. So yeah, that's how it is. In Jordan, views about how girls should behave extend to the activities that they should or shouldn't do. We're watching Mira's brother Saad play basketball. Taking part's not an option for Mira. Do you think that some people think that girls are too weak or too precious to play certain sports? Yes, of course, because they always say these games are is uh, only for boys. They are not uh, good for girls. What do you think about that? I don't think it's uh, fair because uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, girls um, can play much better than the boys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sometimes I wish if I were a boy for these things. <laughs> do you sometimes get bored? Yes, a lot of times. A lot of times? <laughs> yeah. I wonder how you think when you just look at a group of guys like this, and these people you're not allowed to be around normally, but they're just normal young people. Does it seem sometimes a bit strange that yes, of there course. are all these rules that stop you going anywhere near them? Yes, of course, because uh, we are, at the end we are all uh, humans and it's strange for me to not talk with them and uh, see how they think, uh, how they live their life. Mm -hmm. Saad is 21 and he lives at home, but he goes out when he wants, comes home when he wants, smokes. In fact, he appears to do just about as he pleases. So why can't his sisters? It's not fair, but I don't know why. It's, it's an issue. It's need, it needs so I don't know why. So you've had it? Maybe you've had it a bit easier than the girls. Yeah, of course. I'm, uh, I'm living my life as uh, I like. Yeah. Does your dad I, have any rules about sports you can't play or things you can't yeah, do? Yeah, he, he have rules, but I break it. I always. You break the rules? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you think Jordan will change? 
proofreading. So <laughs> maybe after 100, 200 years, maybe. After 100, 200 years. So, basketball is out, the trigger. but Mira's dad Marwan says there are plenty of other activities open to girls in Jordan that are more appropriate. Shooting, for example. I prefer girls to, to choose a soft uh, games than a tough games. Maybe it would be hurt or something like that. Girls are more... Uh, soft, more cute, and uh, you know, you have to take care of them. And I will start. Mira and her dad play backgammon a lot, and here, as usual, Marwan's winning. And while he's concentrating on his moves, Mira wants to know why she has to ask permission to socialize with other girls. I told you about uh, a girl, I don't want to mention her name. Yani, I don't like that girl because I feel that she is not a good girl. I don't want you to move around with that girl because she is a naughty girl. She's not a naughty, you don't know her. <laughs> she is uh, yani more liberal than I, than I want my daughter to be. A liberal girl, in Marwan's eyes, is one who goes out with whomever she pleases and doesn't wear the hijab. But his daughters are growing up Amir is interested to know more about her father's views on boyfriends and marriage. If I find, uh, find some uh, person, I want to get married uh, with him, and uh, you don't like him. And I insist that what, will re what your reaction will be. If you insist about uh, a person you want to get married, uh, you will take your, I will talk to you frankly yani, and honestly uh, and uh, freely. Uh, if I find you insist uh, and uh, you have to write to, do, to choice and to decide. But if I find that you will not obey me in this matter, you will take that responsible alone. I mean, I will not support you uh, in getting married someone I don't like. What stands in the way of women being equal to men is, for the most part, is our culture. There's a stereotype of women having to stay at home, do the cleaning, take care of the children, and the men going out. But these stereotypes are tough to shift, partly because in some cases, people believe they're true. This comes up as I walk through Maseru's main market with Shui Shui's mum, Masakonyana. The mother will look after the baby much more, is more capable or it's in a better way than a father would do that. A, a, a mother would raise the child from early childhood take care of the baby, dress the baby, feed the baby. It's not, not to say that the father doesn't help with that. Yeah. He, he, he does help, but I believe the mother does a much better job doing but that. And you see, you say that, and I have to confess, I'm bristling slightly because I understand that I can't breastfeed a baby. Mm -hmm. But apart from that, I don't understand why I can't bring it up just as well as a mother can. I am not saying you can't bring it up. You can, but it's in the mother yeah. more than it is in the father. You say that women just have a different role in the home because they're mothers, because that is what they are put on earth to do. But do you think that belief in some way reinforces stereotypes about what men and women should do, which perhaps create problems for girls and women? It does. It does, unfortunately, it does. It's 8.30 in the morning, and Shui Shui is beginning another day at school. 30% more women in Lesotho are literate than men. They're also getting more professional jobs. But this success is not appealing to everyone. What would you do if, like, you got married to a woman who had, like, uh, her career was 
bigger than yours or she had a bigger job than you guys did. She brought in more money than you guys did. How would that make you feel? First I of all, I wouldn't marry a woman who has... Who's Out. bigger than you. <laughs> Why? I mean, she's going to control me and... No, I wouldn't mind. In our culture, that is, in our culture, that is just not allowed. I wouldn't it's mind. Just, it's, it's, it's just not possible. It's also part of the culture I that, mind. That, that pushes the stereotype that everybody has, right? I, I wouldn't mind I as long as I have my own job also. <laughs> if, if I'm working, if my wife is working and I don't work, then uh -uh. That'll be I can't have that, yes. Because so then she's earning more than me. My, I, role, I as a, my role as a man in the family is what? I don't have a proper role anymore. Culture and tradition are often used to justify something that appears to be contributing to gender inequality. The girls want to talk about Lobola. This is a custom in Lesotho where a man's family gives money or cows to a woman's family ahead of marriage. Do you think that's right then? By the taking out the cows thing? Yeah, yeah it's culture. Yes. Then what can you see? Because you are marrying that someone. You can't no, even take someone's child for free. Can you? No. You must pay. So you have to pay. Okay. So it's basically like a business. If I have a daughter and I'm gonna give her and I'm gonna give my daughter to you, I better be compensated some way. I have to. Yeah. So bring me money. Bring me the cows. I find this really disrespectful. It's like you. It's like you're buying me. Well, this is uh, quite a scene, isn't it? If there are many more beautiful views in the world, I don't think I've ever seen them. We've just come about an hour's drive out of Maseru and. It's in and amongst this extraordinary countryside that the vast majority of people in Lesotho live. And for many who live and earn their living in villages like this one, their lifestyle won't have changed a great deal over the years. People still tend to cattle, they still grow crops. And this particular village is where Shui Shui's great uncle lives. And we wanted to come out here because I've had lots of conversations in Lesotho already, just in my few days here, where people have said to me, well, the reason we can't treat boys and girls and men and women exactly the same is because we've got traditions which we don't want to change, that we must respect. Shui Shui's great uncle and aunt have lived in this area since 1958. As the family elder, her uncle would be the one to negotiate the price of the labola if she was getting married. If Shui Shui turned around in 20 years time and said, I'm getting married, I found a fantastic man. I think he's going to be a great husband, a great father if we have children. Mm -hmm. But I really don't want you taking money from his family. I feel like I'm being sold. Mm -hmm. How would you react to that? I will ask her this, the question. <laughs> you really think I was sold when I... <laughs> <laughs> when my family got um, Lobola from your father's family, do you think I was sold? She, she, when she becomes 21 or whatever, she can basically do whatever she wants. Mm, she's free to. She's free to do. But if she brings a problem to a problem to us, mm -hmm. and we will decide for her, we will tell her what to do. You'll tell her what to do. Mm. Mm -hmm. But she's free to do. She is free. Jesus. But so you'll tell her what to do, but how, she can how, ignore how you. She that doesn't sound very free. Told, how free is she when she's being told what to do? By saying that you would actually tell her what to do, aren't you really taking away her freedom to decide? I won't tell her what to do. I will tell her what is supposed to happen. I've been thinking quite a lot about marriage and this tradition here in Lesotho of a man's family paying a woman's family when they get married and lots of people have said to me you know this is just a tradition I believe in equality it's just a tradition don't read anything into it I suppose if I'm honest I was a little bit skeptical about that but I've been thinking about how I organized my marriage to my wife and I proposed to her because that really is the traditional thing to do in the UK and she took my name when we got married and again I think if you'd asked us we would have said well of course we believe in gender equality absolutely this is just a tradition, it's just something that happens, but just thinking about it in the last 24 hours, I wonder if perhaps they are just simple traditions, whether they do have consequences as well. I think people around me expect me to do really good things. 
when I become older. If you're a woman and you kind of like don't do anything great, just like like below average maybe, that is, that is just like fine and maybe people will be disappointed. But if I, if I were a guy, I think, I think it's more accepted if you like don't do great things in life. Vignes' dad, Christian, and her older brother, Jürgen, are helping to prepare an impressive Saturday morning feast. Iceland's a country that's pushing hard for gender equality, but some of the old expectations haven't gone away, so the freedom to do whatever you want can actually mean trying to do an awful lot more. I think you can you know, pursue your dreams without getting uh, uh, you know, punished by society. Even Maybe it's a matter of, you know, you're free to do all of your dreams as long as you still do all the other things, right? Yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe. Maybe so that's maybe. sort yeah. of the yeah. pressure because responsibilities are always added to women. Yeah. yeah. But more and more, you know, young people decide to live alone. So it's getting more common that you just pursue your own life without any constraints of the family or... Yeah. I just wonder if... Iceland's trying to create a situation where women can work in exactly the same way as men, but it's not ready to let go of the idea that it should be women who are in charge at home. So right. there's yeah. a double pressure there which men are not exposed to. Absolutely. Yeah. I, think, I, th I think that's absolutely right. Yeah. And when it comes, you know, especially when the kids are at, at their young age, you know, for the first two or three years, you know, sometimes think of, I think of, uh, when I think about the girls, you know, my daughters, uh, having a man will only, only slow them down. And having a man will only, you know, get their life more difficult than it should be. Because they put a lot of, I'm afraid they will put a lot of press, pressure on them. And uh, to behave in a certain way and to do things in a certain way. Because I want them to have uh, the freedom of, you know, do what, exactly what they like to do. I really believe that Iceland is going in the right direction and that maybe even in, in like five, six years when I'll be all grown up and, and work in a company or something that I will, for example, get the money that I'm earning and and people will judge me for who I am. But for all Vignes' optimism, her mother Thordis has a warning. I, I have to admit that I thought there was a equality against men and women at, yeah. when I was at your age. Yeah. I was uh, very stupid. <laughs> but I think because that I had the opportunity to go to high school, yeah. universities, yeah. etc., then I thought it was yeah, coming. It must be. And, and the society was telling me that it was okay, that this was not for uh, any debate or we shouldn't be discussing about it because it was obvious that if I were good enough, then everything yeah. is okay. Yeah. So it was just depending on how good I am. Yeah. And I thought, okay, if I'm going to good enough, then I will go all the way. We are so, you know, we are one of the best countries in the world, mm -hmm. according to this. But still, we are, we have so many, yeah, we have so many things to fix. And exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And it takes so long time because uh, it's only top of the iceberg that we see, and yeah. everything is underneath is so, is so uh, much part of us. Nobody actually knows how to fix it or what to do. No. I went into the class and it was me and another girl there and about 11 boys, 12 boys, because the rest of the girls weren't in. Um, and the teacher went out of the room for about five minutes and we were just working, doing our revision. Um, and one of the boys went, oh look, there's only two girls in here. And another one shouted out, gang rape. London is one of the most multicultural cities in the world. This is a market just down the road from Lulu's house and there are people from all over shopping and working as well. And while I wouldn't for a minute suggest that the UK has dealt with racism as a problem, it has made huge strides in the last 30 or 40 years and 
to make a racist comment or express a racist opinion is completely unacceptable now. But then I listen to Lulu and it sounds like sexism is absolutely pervasive in her life. And I don't get the impression that that is being challenged. In some way, it's almost become acceptable. Chicken takeaways are everywhere in London, and a teenage night out will often feature one. As we eat, Lulu's friend Beatrice tells us about something that happened earlier. Today, um, I, was, I was sitting in class and between these two boys, and they were just, um, they were telling me how bad they want, they want to sleep with someone, but then they would like commenting about how they would like sleep with me. And then, nah, um, nah, have you seen that porn um, video? Have you seen that porn video? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll do it like that, I'll do it like that. And then, um, I was like, mate, wait, what's happening? What's happening? <laughs> no, this can't, it's a joke. And I, I got really angry, actually. There's a lot of boys that their parents will never, ever, ever talk to them about anything like that. Mm -hmm. And the only place they learn about sex is on porn. And so that's the only idea they have of it. And they don't know what real sex is. So if they're with a girl, that's what they expect the girl to be like. And real girls ain't like that. But what about the boys? Do Lulu's mates, Bob and Zach, think that their regular consumption of porn affects how they see girls and women? Boys do watch porn. Do you watch porn? Yeah. Yeah. It just happens, like, you know. I don't think it affects how we, we view women. It's just a thing you do. Yeah, but mm, I, I'd say it, it brings your standards up a bit still. Like when you see girls with porn star bodies, you're just like, yeah, I want that one. And I think it also puts a, like, a pressure on because you know, yeah, it's a, there's a lot of dirty shit that goes on. So like, all that stuff actually, people want to do that. Well, like, talk to me about, for instance, like the verb to beat, which presumably for anyone over the age of 25 means nothing. Now, so if you're gonna beat a girl, you're gonna have sex with her. It's the same as sex, really. Yeah. I'm going to beat you, I'm going to have sex with you. It's not got any meaning to it, really. It's not like, oh, yeah, you're going to have sex really violently or whatever. It's just... You're just going to have sex casually. Yeah. Yeah. And if I brought a group of girls here around your age and said... And they said to you, just stop it. Stop the ratings, stop the jokes, stop the comments about my appearance. I don't want any of it. It's not making us feel good. All right, then. Would you listen? Yeah, all right, cool. I, I wouldn't wouldn't comment on them. I'd just be like, all right, then, cool. And then they'd probably miss the, the compliments. I well, don't that's your that. point, right, Zach, that actually some of them like this. Yeah, some of them do like this, I think. I mean, they like, they, they'll sort of deny the, like, that they like the attention, but realistically, who doesn't like yeah. positive attention? Yeah. You always want to look nice you always wanted people to notice that you look nice so yeah if they if they didn't want to look nice stop wearing makeup in college mm. you know what i mean it's if you're not bothered about your parents you don't want people to comment on your parents you don't wear makeup don't dress yourself up yeah completely a man approached me from behind and at midnight grabbed me from behind and at first, I froze. I didn't know what to do. And before, I'd be like, oh, yeah, I'll fight anyone off that says, does anything. But it's that moment where you're stuck, where you can't. As a teenager in London, Lulu has to be streetwise. And like Big Dis, her freedom isn't restricted by her parents. But where they differ is that Lulu has to be constantly aware of her environment. Her mum, Daisy, thinks there's more danger now than when she was growing up. I think I just sort of try and reinforce to her to, you know, think carefully about who she's hanging around with and make sure she knows who they are and who they're friends with and to um, always keep her wits about her. I think it's definitely harder to be a teenage girl today. When I was growing up, I could go out when I was 16 or 17 with a group of friends who were girls out clubbing and drinking and We'd have a good time, we could walk home together and be relatively safe. Um, but certainly these days I wouldn't let my daughters walk home at two in the morning with a group of girls. I think there are far too many scary men out there really because of influences from the internet and porn particularly. 
and I would definitely see a lot of them as predators. Marwan's beliefs are deeply rooted in Islam. Any parent's love for their children is going to translate into a desire to protect them. And inevitably, as kids grow up, there's a tension between our desire to protect and their desire for a few more freedoms. But what's interesting listening to Marwan is that he isn't just concerned with protecting Mira from harm, he's also worrying about her reputation and his family's. What follows is a definition of equality that says girls and women are equal, but different. And this is not seen as something which might evolve or can be challenged, but something which is fixed. Sounds incredible, huh? Oh, it's nice. When I see the, the way that Mira is living, there are lots of things that she can't do that a 15-year-old boy could do. She can't... Like meet, what? Like what? She can't meet with friends without your permission. Yes. And she can meet her uh, friends, but I have to know uh, the, the family because I don't like to have uh, a relationship with an uh, extreme liberal family. Is it more important to protect their reputation and to respect your religion than it is for them to be equal in society? Uh, uh, you can say yes, yes. So actually it's more important that they're safe, that they have a good husband, that they have a secure home. That's more important than whether they're equal to men and boys. Right. Uh, in our country, in our traditions and culture, if a, a girl is more too liberal, I, I, I think uh, men uh, in general, they don't like a liberal uh, family or liberal woman. They, w they want a co conservative uh, lady or woman or wife because they feel more trusty with her. They feel that uh, she doesn't have uh, a love relation before she will give more uh, attention and care and love for her future husband. If I were a boy, even just for a day. Despite living thousands of miles apart, being from very different backgrounds, Mira, Lulu, Vigdis and Shui Shui are all frustrated that their societies think that girls need to be kept out of harm's way. But in Lesotho, there are high rates of rape and the third highest prevalence of HIV in the world. That would concern any parent and affect the rules that they set. It is very easy to succumb to such pressures from the boy to get involved in sex before you are even ready to, to get involved in, in sexual relationships like that. And it's, it, it is very troubling to me as a mother, as I'm sure it is to many other mothers, that you will not be um, um, strong enough to you know to to say no there's also the risk of hiv and aids you may not get pregnant but the disease is rife and no parent myself included would like to find their child in a position where they are hiv positive one mistake, one mistake can change your whole life. Three, two, one. We want to learn. Caution is of course no bad thing in some circumstances, but in others it may be a hindrance. I'm spending an evening at Lulu's theatre group in southeast London. Sometimes the girls seem resigned to inequality and lacking something or someone to inspire them to take it on. Can you name me? A female role model, you think? There's an example of what I could be. Beyonce. 
Who else? Um, I forgot her name, but she's a female astronaut. What about political role models? Any female politicians you could name? In general, so no. I would inspire. To be honest, I don't really know some. To be honest, I would inspire to be a Barack Obama, even if it was a man. Yeah. Could you could you name a could you name a high profile female politician? Michelle. I'm not talking about politician, is she? <laughs> And it's not only men who stand in the way. Mothers and sisters can also reinforce the reasons why men and women should be treated differently. You know that this is the way that my father uh, raised us and uh, uh, my mother raised us uh, to be that uh, the woman or the girl, a general, uh, her, her uh, position is at home to raise her children, to do home homeworks, you know. It's not about uh, uh, being fair or unfair. Uh, it's about uh, that we have to get used to this, uh, these rules around us. This is the, the life that we, we live, you know. Mm -hmm. You have to get used. Something Vigdis doesn't want to get used to is that still, sometimes, she struggles to be taken seriously. Would you say that you are a feminist? Yeah. The word feminist, uh, people don't look at it as it is. It, and people have, like, they, they just hear the word feminist and they just think, oh, she's going to talk about how women should have equal rights for two hours. I don't even, hmm. I don't even bother seeing yeah. her tonight. I'm not going to give her a break. No. no. And I just, I just bother, I don't even bother to listen to her. Mm. But it, it, it shouldn't be that. You, you should be proud to be a feminist. It should be exactly. a good thing. Yeah, yeah. But my experience is that there are so many hindrances, thresholds for women. There is a glass roof that uh, we need to break. Yeah. I, I have been trying to do it for you, <laughs> but I probably need your help to, to go through. Yeah, yeah, I see. I'm, I'm counting on you. <laughs> no, no pressure. <laughs> hmm. The lack of any countries in the world where men and women are equal is mirrored by the almost total absence of anyone who'll say that they shouldn't be. We say everyone's equal, but all the while we're helping to perpetuate or at least tolerate a status quo, which is making sure that that doesn't happen. And if I've learned anything while making this program, it's that if Alice and Esther and everyone else is going to be equal in this world, we can't just wait for gender equality to magically appear. It's going to take millions of individual decisions by parents, by teachers, by boys and by girls themselves. And I guess that comes down to priorities. Just how much do we want this to happen? Where does gender equality fit in versus our traditions and our beliefs? But Let's not kid ourselves here. It's not law or education that's standing in the way of equality. It's primarily us.